time I would have said, well, what a coincidence. It's Ramadan, I'm being taken into a mosque. And what a coincidence, the car just happens to have stopped at Maghrib time outside one of the biggest uh, places of pilgrimage in Iran. But there's no such thing as chance. And I was, I was carried up stone steps in Qom by a human wave of women in black. And I was put into a, what I called a black sheet, which was four inches too short, I'm six foot. And so I was more, I wasn't in a spiritual frame of mind at all. And I was definitely not interested in converting to Islam because that was for other people. But then this. At last, we reached the 20 foot high white entrance. An armed guard, Tom Selleck with a mummo brow, looked disturbed at the sight of me. I couldn't blame him. I was a giant flightless bird, more suited to the South Pole than this steamy place. Clearly, he was running through the option of pulling me aside. Women were pressing forward all around me, so perhaps I'd be crushed to death before I even got inside the mosque. Tom Selleck grunted permission. A human wave lifted me off my feet and beneath a dazzling sky of endless mirrors. I was instantly hit by the aroma of myrrh. I had no idea that in a short while I would drift off swathed in its pungent earthiness, or that I would awaken from a deep sleep, not in the five-star comfort of the Hilton Hotel Esfahan, but under these same mirrors. I would put freezing water from a cracked basin on my hands, my arms, my feet and my head. I would wake up to a new mindset, my heart, certain of the pillars of faith from a book which till then had terrified me. Oh, well, you start with the book actually before I get to this, this moment, this incredible, incredible spiritual transformation. But in terms of the surprise you're conveying about it, looking back, do you feel that there were many sages that mm. took you to this point? It was not as sudden, as, as you said, not at all coincident. You know, it was about as sudden as uh, those pop bands who get to number one and everyone says, what's it like to be an overnight success? And they don't see how they've been slugging away for 15, 20 years in small venues around the country to be an overnight success. So it wasn't an overnight thing. I just didn't recognize that I was being steered and guided away from one way of thinking and really not away from one way of thinking but just having my perception opened um, this isn't in the book but i remember uh, i had been asked to work at the islam channel in 2006 7 and uh, to this day as far as i know i'm the only woman to have ever presented on the islam channel without hijab on and that was because the uh, ceo Muhammad Ali said, okay, don't wear hijab then. I challenged him in a meeting. I said, don't try and make me Muslim. Don't make me wear hijab. Don't speak to me about Islam because I'm never going to be Muslim. And he said, okay, don't wear hijab then. Um, we won't try and make you Muslim, but Allah has decided whether or not you'll be Muslim. And I said, no, 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 I know. You're Allah, with due respect, he doesn't know. He said, oh, he knows. It's already written whether you will or won't be. But there were certain instances, for example, on a Friday night, I was at the Islam Channel, and there were three young men. They were about 18 years old, and they were sitting in a small room, and I was opposite them. And I was looking at them, and they were so, they, they were dazzling. They seemed to be giving off a light. Long beards, very alien to my culture. And they were reciting this sing song. And I know now that they were Qaris, and they were reciting the Quran. And I was preparing to go out afterwards and go out drinking and, and go out and behave in a way that was, you know, not going to bring light. And all of these things started to make me really look at where I was. Do you feel that?